we can never get enough of Big Fudge. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Marshall was the best friend on How I Met Your Mother. I'm sorry, dude, but that is just the most ridiculous sleeping attire I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> anyway. Marshall's wearing a nightgown. Marshall's wearing a nightgown. Hey guys, you know how in the future we're always saying, remember when Marshall wore a nightgown? This is that time! For this list, we'll be looking at the moments where the most lovable member of the gang was at his best and displayed qualities that make him the best friend anyone can have. Since Marshall remains such a good friend throughout all the nine seasons, here's your spoiler alert just in case. Number 10. Making a dangerous leap to motivate his friends. Okay. This is it. Here we go! Whenever a particular thought enters Marshall's mind, pretty much nobody can convince him otherwise. Although the elusive rooftop of the neighboring building attracts Marshall's interest, his second thoughts prevent him from jumping across. Okay. Okay. However, after hearing Lily's advice to Ted over following what the universe is telling him to do, Marshall is motivated to make a statement. Listen to what the world is telling you to do and take the leap. You're right. Throwing all doubts aside, he takes the leap of faith and manages to do what seemed impossible. Not only does this inspire the others to follow suit, it leads to the rest of the group overcoming their doubts. Oh, I did it! Katie, you did it! With Barney and Robin encouraged to give their burgeoning romance a shot and Ted accepting the job offer that leads him to meeting the mother, Marshall's act of bravery was certainly worth the leap. Number 9. Reassuring Ted of his belief in love. Marshall's always got his bros back, right down to his favorite film. Okay, if Stella doesn't like this movie, I can't marry her. No, you can't. You want to watch it again? Yes, I do. Over time, Ted's repeated failures in love lead to his romantic side being ridiculed by most people. This is made far worse after his ex fiancee Stella and Tony, the man she left him at the altar for, write a romantic comedy that places Ted as the villain in their story. We're supposed to taste wedding cakes this afternoon, remember? Ouch! No can doville, baby doll. Though he's already insecure over his emotional baggage, even Ted's friends end up loving the movie, including Marshall. However, while the rest of the group consider Ted's dating life to be ruined, Marshall sees things in a different way. The guy who's uncynical and sincere and believed in things. And you know what, Ted? I believe that deep down, you're still that guy. Reminding Ted about the qualities that he considers to be the best of his, he comes up with an uplifting speech that reinvigorates the inner romantic in Ted. I think you want to go out there and get that girl. I do want to go out there and get that because girl. Because she's the love of your life. Because she's... Well, uh, okay, let's... Uh, we're three dates in. She seems nice. Because she seems nice. She does seem nice. Number eight, encouraging his friends to find flaws in him. The death of Marshall's father brings a period of deep depression for him, which takes a long time to heal. I miss my dad, Ted. I miss him so much. In order to ease the pain, his friends start behaving way too nice around him. After catching on to this special treatment, Marshall tries out outrageous things to see just how much leeway he can get. And once I figured it out, I started doing crazy stuff to see how far you'd let me go. Hey, guys. This is Rex. He's a possum. I found him in the trash. He lives with us now. Rather than take advantage of this the way someone like Barney would, though, he confronts the gang about it. I am perfect. <laughs> oh, for the love of God, guys, enough already. Arguing that being flawed is what makes him feel human, Marshall encourages the others to find gaps in his personality. Seriously, it's time. What are my gaps? Despite hearing some things about himself that could be hurtful, Marshall finds the humor in it instead, absolving his friends from feeling guilty. You consistently miss at least one belt loop. It's like I'm blind. Uh, you're too old to ask to see the cockpit. Whoa. Whoa, guys. My dad just died. No, I'm just kidding. This is great. Number seven, using the slap bet to save Barney's wedding. The long-running slap bet pops up frequently over the years, with Marshall reserving the slaps for special occasions to torment Barney. This is the best Thanksgiving food! <laughs> While he misses most of the wedding weekend due to being stuck on the road, Marshall arrives in time to deliver Barney with the penultimate slap.
Although that particular incident is played for laughs, he uses the final slap to ensure Barney does get married. It's right by my bed, back in Manhattan. Stall from now, back in six hours, stops. <laughs> After realizing that the big moment really is here, Barney begins to have a case of cold feet. Sensing this, Marshall smacks all the sense he needs back into him right at the altar. Wait, I'm free. It's over. The slap bet is finally over? Yeah, it is, buddy. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Not only does this finally set Barney free from the bet, Marshall's slap gives him the clarity to go through with the wedding. Number six when he paid tribute to his old friend, the Fiero car. A friend to all things, living or inanimate, Marshall never gives up on those he loves. <laughs> this extended to his car, the Fiero, as well, remaining his most beloved possession right until it quits. Despite having several problems, like repeating the same song all the time, Marshall loves the car unconditionally. This Fiero's meant a lot to all of us. Friendships were made, adventures had, horrors faced. That's why we have to get rid of it. Due to the many memorable moments it brought, including the road trip where he became best friends with Ted, Marshall finds it difficult to say goodbye. Rather than abandon the Fiero, though, he resolves to pay tribute to his old friend by pushing it past the 200,000 mile mark. And while that plan doesn't quite work out, Marshall does hang back to bid his farewell. Number five, keeping his relationship with Robin platonic. And that's why we never hang out alone? Yes, as Lily's best friend, you were the last person on the planet who's allowed to turn into a mermaid. Just about every male character in the series gets attracted to Robin. Everyone except for Marshall, that is. Although they don't spend as much time together, they have some great times to remember, occasionally competing like siblings. The very idea of thinking of Robin romantically is revolting to Marshall, though, as he's more than happy to remain close friends. With her more aggressive personality serving as a contrast to Marshall's more sensitive nature, their friendship takes a unique turn. Oh my gosh! How long have you been doing this? However, Marshall reveals he deliberately keeps things platonic between them in order to avoid falling for Barney's mermaid theory. Fine. This night's a little awkward. I guess it's because we never hang out alone together. Why is that? because of the mermaid theory. Although he almost gets attracted to her by the end of their exclusive hangout, his dedication towards their friendship is ultimately far stronger. I am I am so sorry. Oh, you must think I'm totally disgusting. I really do. <laughs> Number four, refusing to betray Ted with Sven. No matter how tempting it might be to break them, Marshall always sticks to his principles. Give me the good news. He didn't get it. What? The board decided to go with Sven. In this episode, Barney sells out to Ted's rivals, Sven, naming them the lead architect for GNB's new building after being swayed by the promise of a cool new office. Bilson told me he wanted to give the job to Ted, so what happened? Upon learning of this betrayal, Marshall refuses to go along with Barney's plan, shunning his attempts to entice him too. Knowing how badly Ted wanted this to be his big break, he gives a memorable speech about friendship. What the hell is the matter with you? This is Ted's big break, and then you sold him out because you wanted to work in the brain of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which, incidentally, if you knew anything about dinosaurs, is really, really small. After making Barney see the error of his ways, Marshall steers the blame away from him to keep his friendship with Ted alive. There's also something that you should know about why you didn't get the job in the first place. You see, Ted, it was Bilson. Yeah, yeah. Wilson just wanted to have an office and a dinosaur head, but Barney convinced him that it was really, really stupid. Well, you know. Now here's a pal who forgives even the worst in his friends. Number three, when he took Robin to the Minnesota-themed bar. How did you find this place? Being a Canadian, Robin receives a lot of jokes at her expense from Barney and Ted. Sympathizing with her homesickness, Marshall takes her to a Minnesota-themed bar. Evening, everybody. Marshall! Meet Robin. Robin! Go back to drinking. Drinking! Although he's successful in helping her blend in, he gets jealous when Robin fits in a little too well. After she overtakes him in popularity, he gives away her status as a Canadian. Feeling apologetic over his actions, Marshall reassures Robin of her place in New York, giving a touching speech over why she belongs in their lives. We all love you. 
okay? If you ever moved back to Canada, we would hop on a plane, we would track you down, and after Barney dragged us to a few of those strip clubs you talked about, <laughs> We will bring you back right here where you're supposed to be. In order to make up for his earlier attitude, he goes out of his way to find a Canadian-themed bar just for Robin. Finally, for good measure, Marshall even sings his own rendition of Robin's hit, Let's Go to the Mall. Everybody Number two, lifting Ted's spirits over buying a house. Overwhelmed by the lack of progress in his love life, Ted buys a house on an impulse. Guys, I just bought my dream house. This decision proves unpopular with his friends, who make no attempts at hiding their disapproval, with only Marshall defending him. All right, let's lay off Ted. Thank you. All right, we've all done some stupid things in our lives. For example, I remember a time when I dropped some bottle rockets in the toilet, and I tried to dry them off in the microwave. After realizing his mistake, Ted partakes in taking out his frustrations by destroying the house wall. However, it's only Marshall who understands Ted's lack of closure, waiting for him with a housewarming lunch. Happy housewarming. But I, I, I told you last time I saw you, I'm selling the place. I know what you said. Giving Ted the reassurance he needs, Marshall encourages him to stay true to his emotional nature, promising to be by his side. In the end, Marshall's show of unconditional support motivates Ted to follow his dreams. And as it turns out, it's this house that Ted and the mother raise their children in. Your heart is both drunk and a kid. Thanks for sticking up for me, man. That's what I do. Marshall is like the best friend ever. We all need someone like Big Fudge in our life. Before we unveil our favorite Marshall moment, however, here are a few honorable mentions. Arranging Lily's birthdays. Because only Lily's marshmallow can pull it off. It's still my birthday! <laughs> because he loves planning birthdays. Feliz cumpleaños, baby! The theme of today's birthday breakfast in bed is Spanish interlude. When he invited Lily's dad to Thanksgiving, get yourself an in-law like Marshall. Hell, I haven't even seen a wedding photo. And then right before my eyes, your father broke down crying. <laughs> That's it! He was coming to Thanksgiving! Rightfully shames Ted for being a jerk on St. Patrick's Day, because a true friend calls you out on your mistakes. You kissed a married woman, Ted. You committed credit card fraud. You kissed a married woman. Do you know how offensive that is to me? You're turning into Barney. We don't need another Barney. Helping Robin escape from mysterious attackers, because there's no better sidekick than Big Fudge. No questions asked. Tell me about that giant trout you and your dad caught ice fishing that one time. Well. It was more beast than trout. Fought us for three hours and nearly dragged us both into Lake Winnebagoshish. It was this big and... <laughs> Consuming sandwiches to reaffirm his friendship with Ted, because Marshall's always got his friends' backs. Okay, quick, before Lily gets here, let's fire this up. No way, I promised Lily that I would be responsible. You're not getting your 60 bucks back. Give me that. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Making the best night ever montage for Barney and Robin. There's never a dull moment when Marshall's your best friend. Nailed it! Best night ever! <laughs> Worst night ever. <laughs> Elated that they have another couple to be with, Marshall and Lily go the extra mile to please Barney and Robin. Unfortunately, Marshall wastes no time in voicing his gratitude. Come on, they just got excited. They've been looking for couple best friends forever. Plus, I'm sure they weren't that bad. Show them. Having become obsessed with making photo montages, especially for everyday mundane events, he comes up with the best one yet. Putting together everything the couples did on their double date, Marshall goes so far as to sing a heartwarming tribute to his friends to go along with it. While there's no doubt this ends up being unintentionally hilarious, it also highlights how much effort Marshall puts into trying to keep his friends happy. Then we pledge charades. Lily made some creme brulee, lay, 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 lay. and now that we're best couple friends, there's only one thing left to say. 
Considering he has the heart to post tributes to cat funerals, who wouldn't want to be free next Saturday for Marshall? Cat funeral, cat funeral. It was an accident and not entirely my fault. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.